Hey everyone, Omerko here, self-taught web developer. We are nearing the end of Angular Material series, and if you would like to check the full series, you will have a link to it down in the description of this video. But for this video, we will work once again with the text fields from Angular. This time, we will work with some nice utilities for the text fields, like autofill. This text field package provides us with some nice utilities that we can use for elements like input and text area. The example that we will build today is called autofill and it is a feature from this package. This autofill is actually the injectable that we can use. And we can use it to monitor changes and autofill changes on our input and also text area fields. The first thing that we will do for this tutorial is generate our component, where we will use our, well, autofill. To do that, I will use command of ng, g for generate, c for components, and I will generate my component in components, slash cdk, slash text field. From there, we can move ourselves to a code editor. I will open my app.component.html file, and here I will hide this scrolling component. Right after this component, I will set my comment of cdk text field and I will use my app text field component that we just generated. I will also set here the ending comment, which is end of cdk text field. Now, let's say that I wish to have some simple form where the user can enter his first and the last name. As I would need those fields for the form, I could also set up the auto fill for those fields as well. So for that, let's go into our components, then cdk, and let's find our text field component which is here, and I will open up the TypeScript file of it. In this file, I will create now those properties that will be used to indicate if the field was auto filled or not. So to do that, here I will create public property of first name auto filled. This here will be a boolean. And what I can do is set this initial value to this boolean to be false. Now, right after this first name auto filled, I will create another property, a public property of last name auto filled. And this here will be boolean as well, and it will be set to false as well. These here are boolean properties. So when auto fill is detected, those will be set to true, otherwise those will be false. Now that we have our properties here, we could go into our text field component.html file and create our form and the fields that we need. So what I will do here first, I will create one div and I will pass style property to this div. This style property will hold the margin top of 50 pixel, I misspelled there. 50 pixel and text align to be center. Now, as we need this form inside of this div, I will create form here. This form won't need any action actually. What I will do? Well, I will use submit event here. So when this form is submitted and I will just prevent any submission here. And to do that, I will grab the event. Well, when the submit happens, and on it, I will use this method called prevent default, which means that it will prevent a default action, which is usually that submit. Now, inside of this form, we could create, well, few fields that we would need. For example, I could create math form field, and this math form field could have appearance of fill. To this math form field, I will pass math label, and the label will say first name. So this is that first element for our form, which is the first name. And we would also need the input field here. The type of the input field, well, it's not important. It, it will be a text, but if I would just use math input here, it will automatically detect the type as it should. So now that I have this input field here, if I wish to utilize my properties, my first name out of field property here, I could do that right here. Instead of creating my own event here and also trying to, well, detect if this field was out of field or not, well, there is event called CDK out of field. This here will do that, well, all of that automatically for us. 
So once this is detected, once out of field was detected, we can do something with it. And what I wish to do is grab my first name out of field, which is the property that we have, and I will just set it equal to my event that I have. So once this event happens, and I will use here is out of field, which means that if this out of field was detected, then we will grab that detection and pass the value of it and the value will be true or false to the field that we have our first name out of field. Now this here would be our first element that we have. Let's just grab the whole element and paste it below. I will keep the appearance of field for my math form field, but instead of the first name I will use last name as a label here and here instead of utilizing my first name out of field, I will use last name out of field and I will set it again well, I will set it to be equal to the event that is out of field. And finally, what we could do after all of our fields, we could just create one button. The button could be math raised button and it will say submit. So let me repeat myself once again here. This prevent default is a method that will well prevent this form to be submitted because this submit event has a default action of submit. So this here will prevent that. So we don't kind of submit our form and then I need to go back and so on. This is just for the tutorial purpose. And as you see, we use this CDK out of field event, which is the event that comes to us from that text field package. And this event will run whenever the form was out of field. Well, not the form, but this specific field. The end result for this should be our simple form. But in the background, this form is tracking our out of field data. With that, we can run specific methods for our out of field information. For example, we could also save those in our analytics for tracking and offering a better user experience for the users. But with this, we are finished. If you would like to learn more about this feature, you will have a link down in the description of this video to its documentation. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel as I post new content weekly. Thank you and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye!